Hey guys, welcome back to the Jeremy Com channel. I get a lot of PMs and questions regarding how to set up Infinity if you you really have a desire to play but you don't have a big group of people playing Infinity in your area. How do how do you get that going? Well, I can't give you the end all be all list, but I can tell you what things worked in my local area. And uh that's what this whole worksheet's going to be going over. So let's take a look. The first thing you need to determine at the beginning before you decide to plan anything out is how many people are interested in playing Infinity in your area. If it's you and you alone, we got a plan. If it's you plus one, two, or three people, there's another plan. And if you have a group of more than four, and this really kind of goes into much larger groups, or if you have your own gaming group, let's say you guys played another game, but you guys want to switch over to Infinity, and there's six of you, you can kind of skip a few of the steps in making all this happen. For my personal experience, it, what, by the time I was getting involved in Infinity, there were three other players, but they were not necessarily regulars to the local gaming store that we were trying to set all this up with. Uh, so more or less really was me and two other people. I mean, if you kind of merge how much time people were playing Infinity, it was me plus two. And that's why that area is highlighted. It's really the experience that I had in, in putting all this stuff together. We have a very transient area where people are coming in for college, leaving for college, coming in and out of doing work in the tech sector. And for this reason alone, our numbers keep fluctuating in infinity. But as it stands right now, uh, we basically have anywhere between 10 and 14 Infinity players, and it offers us a lot of freedom in creating events. Okay, so what should you do when it's just you and you alone? Well, you'll notice here that I straight off the bat, you're going to be purchasing two armies. This is not two huge armies. This is basically two sets of four models or so. Just enough to get about 100 points on both sides of the table so that you can sit down and really learn the game. And maybe you might be able, even able to pull in some local gaming store support, explaining to them that you know you're interested in bringing Infinity to your area. Maybe they can provide you uh, some discount to it. If not, make sure you take a look at other stores like Sci-Fi Genre that can give you a, a good 20% off on most of the models in the Infinity range. And you really want to focus on learning the game from the standpoint of the eight or so models that you have for demoing. Try to make sure that you understand the rules for those models backwards and forwards so that lookup is minimized and then start running individual demos at your local gaming store. And this is different than a demo day. This is where you, you know, you've contacted a single buddy or uh, you've met someone at the local gaming store who is interested in trying Infinity with you and they can sit down and play a game this will do two things. One, it might get the other person's feet wet in Infinity to the point that they either purchase that second army back from you or they go off and purchase their own army. And the other thing is that it also ensures that your knowledge of Infinity is increased dramatically because once you've played your first game, you'll realize kind of how fluid the game is as long as you're not picking a lot of uh, specialty type units, you're going to be able to learn the game incredibly quickly and get to the point where your knowledge is substantial enough that you can start progressing beyond a one-on-one -on -one type situation. So when you're purchasing your first two armies for demoing, focus on easy to play units, avoid for demo purposes, hackers, tags, advanced deployment, link teams, and hidden deployment. These are models with TO camouflage. Uh, just go ahead and avoid using those for your first game just so that you can get to the point where you have a very basic game that can be played out. You're going to eventually get to some of these other units, but for your initial demos, avoid those units. And also, and this goes across the top, remember to focus on balancing the terrain. You do not want to set up terrain in such a way that it's sparse and that people get used to the notion of, oh, all I need is a sniper to sit back in my deployment zone and camp. Because this is not how Infinity is played. Do your best to make sure you have sufficient terrain to avoid that scenario. Or 
again, just choose that when you're playing early on, don't take snipers or HMG units either. This might limit you a little bit too much, but again, go with what you have. When it's just you alone, you really just need to get one or two more Infinity players because it opens up the door to be able to do so many more things as soon as you have just a small group who are interested in playing Infinity. So now it's you plus one to three others who are interested in playing Infinity. At this point, you get a whole new range of things that you can do, and this goes in addition to what you're able to do when it's just you. So you can still run those independent one-on-one -on -one demos whenever you want, but when you have just a couple of other people in your group, you then open the door to be able to run Infinity Demo Days, where you might have a couple of tables running at the same time, you helping to uh, manage or, or teach on one table and one of your other buddies moving on to another table. You then can start getting people into the notion of slow grow leagues. And there's two types as far as I can tell. There's that 100 to 200 point league and a 200 to 300 point league. The goals are different between the two and the way you should kind of handle those. So we kind of break them up into two different parts. And also running slow grow tournaments. Let's go ahead and take a look at the demo days. So you're about to run your first demo day. In a demo day, basically, you're, you have a couple of tables set up so that you can queue people up to, to demo the game. You make a big announcement at your local game store that you're going to do this. That contact that you had with them when it was just you helps to foster a good notion so that they're excited about running this demo day. You've had a couple people come in to play Infinity already in your group, and your local gaming store has garnered some sales so now they're saying hey you know what we want to help support you and maybe they'll even provide you with a blister or two so that during your demoing people get tickets for games that they demo and those tickets go into a raffle that wins them you know one or two models or maybe you break it up into two prizes the goals for the demo days is to get people interested in talking about the notion of what you're going to be hosting after the demo day, which is a slow grow league. And we'll get into what that is in future slides. The big thing is that you're introducing the game to people who may not have ever heard what is Infinity. But the big thing you want to avoid is information overload. And by this, you really want to go ahead and make sure that each one of your buddies that is working with you is effectively running their own table and that you've kind of sat down and really hammered out lists that can be used for demos. Again, you can go back to those first two armies that you purchased for with 100 points. And now if you have two buddies helping you out, maybe they each have at least 100 points of their particular army and they're very knowledgeable about what those armies do so again you're you're minimizing your lookup but the information overload is when you're running a demo and you have someone else who's in who's knowledgeable about infinity come over and just overload the person demoing the game with too much information if the if whatever they're saying doesn't actually exist on the table like you'll get into these situations where uh they'll talk about oh you know when you're deploying, you really should do this, and then you'll have some guy come over, oh, but you know what, that really doesn't account for mechanized deployment and advanced deployment, you're like, well, that's not in this table. Instead of even getting that involved, you want to push those people away from the demo and just focus on the game at hand. So let's take a look at about what the Slow Grow League, once you got some people through demo days interested in learning a lot more about Infinity. Okay, so you've had your demo day. You now have, you know, a, a nice chunk of people that are interested in, in playing Infinity because they tried it out. They really liked it. It You might have anywhere between six and eight people who are now interested in Infinity. Now is the time to start introducing a slow grow league. And you do the first one from 100 to 200 points. This really is to get people ramped up in knowledge of the game quickly because the goal or the reward is by playing the game not in the wins and losses and the goal is to get players to become independent and have more infinity players in your group now what do i mean by all this 
when you have a player who is not completely reliant on someone else for all the rules that govern their particular models, those players are classified as independent. Okay, so how did we run our first Slow Grow League? We did it in five weeks. You can see the point lists out for those five weeks. And we had full disclosure of lists for week one and two. Full disclosure minus your lieutenant week three. And then week four and week five, there was no disclosure of your list. Players got points for simply playing games as opposed to winning or losing games during the slow grow league and the way that they got the points was that if player a played player b one of the two had to post a bat rep in our local gaming stores forum in order to get points and you got one point for every game you played and one point in addition for every unique player you played against during the entire five week series if players ever got to 12 points by the tournament time they got a free line model up for their army so we had a little bit of prize support it really made the slow grow league kind of run incredibly smoothly and it's important to reward your veteran players for not just kicking people in the teeth and instead using that time to mentor and for this reason the way that we had it set up is that if it was two veteran players playing, they had to do a full-blown, really extensive bat rep. If it was two new players playing, all they had to do was list what their army lists were, which came straight out of inf the Infinity Army list generator, and a couple of sentences that kind of overall explain how they played the game and, and things that they would do differently. If a veteran player played a new player, Instead of focusing on being really detailed about what happened on each turn, they basically got to do the same kind of bat rep that the newer players got to play, which is just post your list and give a quick conclusion. In exchange, they were expected to mentor and really teach the game to the new player. So there's some pitfalls with running a slow grow league, and, and these are just caveats or things you want to avoid and one is you do not want your brand new players or even your veteran players to be dealing with rude players so deal with that as quickly as you can uh, I went ahead in the rule system specified straight up we're looking for people to be you know very generous with one another generally speaking your your the veteran players who have been with you since day one kind of helping you get infinity going are going to realize the importance of getting more infinity players in the group and they're not going to be rude the other thing you want to avoid is veterans looking to route players and again you you don't want them to just completely kick them in the teeth and and have the new player go this game sucks i don't know why i'm playing it and that's why you encourage the veteran players to to act more like mentors and you reward them by making their ability to get points for the slow grow league really really easy you want to avoid not utilizing every opportunity to teach the game and in doing so i would actually go out to the to the slow grow league and run learn your army games which basically stated that every single time we were playing at the conclusion of each one of their movements I would tell them how I'd react to it so that they had a choice to go did I want to do that or did I not um, and basically it was just a game with just a ton of mulligans for the brand new players I didn't do this with veteran players but with brand new players it was let me help you learn everything you need to know about your army and you also want to avoid situations where veterans are playing armies that they're well versed in so we had a rule kind of stipulated up front that this is a slow grow league in order to kind of level the playing field a little bit we wanted veterans to play armies that they had not played before in the big scheme of things the way that we're going to have handle this is that if a veteran or if, if an experienced player has taken an army to a tournament they cannot bring them to this 100 to 200 point slow grow league they can try some other faction that's completely fine but where we don't want them to be so well versed in their army that the new player has no opportunity to even begin to score a win 
Okay, you've gotten past your first slow grow league of 100 to 200 points, and now you're looking at your next slow grow league. And generally speaking, you're going to give players a little bit of a break in between these two leagues, right? So at the conclusion of league, the first league, you might give them three to four weeks. Um, ours happen to be a longer break because of real life events happening and people needing to deal with them, primarily me. Uh, but we finally got around to doing our next slow grow league. And the purpose of this is to, again, increase player knowledge. And you want to still encourage brand new players to jump in at 200 points. Um, the reward, again, is playing the game, not in the wins and losses. But the goal is a little bit different. While you still want to increase your infinity player pool, or the number of people who play the game... The goal here, instead of getting them to become independent, is to go even beyond independent, and so that beyond the rule system itself, players become very knowledgeable about different types of tactics that are available within Infinity. Okay, so what did we do exactly when we're dealing with our more advanced slow grow league? We did it again in five weeks. Weeks one and two are 200 points. Week three is 250. Week four is 300. Week five is 300. Now, you'll notice that we also introduced these new missions, and we did it very specifically in such a way to, again, meet the goals, which was to increase players' tactic knowledge as well as the purpose of this one that we chose with for the very specific rule set that wasn't used all the time was different types of terrain. So in each one of the missions, we actually make a certain type of unit suck, basically, or give the your opponent a really good chance of garnet getting more points. And then in other missions, we also make different types of units suck and affect the terrain by introducing zero G or in week four, we're going to be introducing jungle and mountain terrain. And, and with the reason we pick zero G first, even though it's very, very hard to deal with for a lot of different types of units is that it did not incur both movement difficulty and visibility issues. Whereas in the jungle and the mountain terrain, or especially in the jungle terrain, there becomes low visibility zones. So the ability to fire on people gets affected as well as your movement. And uh, we will actually be presenting some of these missions in later videos. So why do we run all of these slow grow leagues and things of this nature? Well, it really kind of falls into what we've seen as the effect of having an event to attend versus not having an event for a particular game. And specifically with Infinity, Basically, we'd have anywhere between two and four players show up at the local gaming store to play when we weren't in the middle of an event. So in a non-event week, we'd have two to four players. But if we were running a slow grow league, we would see anywhere between six and ten players attend weekly. Now, we also found out that events really can't last more than five weeks. Our first slow grow league, we actually had a problem with... Um, scheduling the tournament and they kept going back and forth between six and five weeks but really as people um, are in something for more than five weeks real life usually takes over and consumes something that they're doing so you want to minimize your events to be no more than five weeks but like I said when you have an event going on you definitely will have more players coming to your local gaming store and just the sheer number of people playing and having fun can often pull more people to your uh in into your game than any other thing you could possibly be doing again for the slow grow tournaments for the smaller slow grows penalize players who bring a faction that they've played before uh really you're you're focusing in on those new players and trying to make sure they feel welcome and that you want them to become as knowledgeable as you are. And larger slow grows don't restrict, but often encourage differentiation, like maybe even taking a different sectorial. Okay, now you've made it so that you're more than four people playing Infinity. Maybe you've done some demo days, and you've done some slow grow, and you might not have retained every single player, but you've retained the majority of them as they've gotten through the slow grow. Remember to keep using formats like that to increase your numbers to at least eight. Infinity is very much a game not about the list, but about the experience that a person has from the standpoint of the more experienced player will generally win regardless of what their list 
makeup is. And for this reason, it, it can be a little bit daunting, but you utilize those slow grow formats where you're encouraging veterans to mentor people and you're penalizing people for running uh, armies that they've already played so that again you're kind of leveling the playing field the best you can and you increase the, the number of your infinity group to at least eight and once you have eight you can start adding non slow grow events like tournaments because you have that threshold of people where a tournament becomes truly viable I also at this point started attending local gaming conventions and really did this more as a way to pay back all the support that we had from the local gaming stores for providing a little bit of prize support here and there. Uh, we actually took to a couple of gaming conventions actual demo or, or starter boxes for Infinity and sold them at the at the local gaming conventions again on behalf of the gaming store and ended up having a really good connection with the store owner. Are you curious about the missions that we ran specifically for our first advanced slow grow? Like I said before, be happy to provide that information for you as well as any other information that I can give to you to make starting up Infinity in your area as easy as possible from the list that we use for our demos to any other information you want to know, don't hesitate but to simply drop me a line or a PM and I'll pr try to provide you with any information that I have at my disposal. Hope you enjoyed and um, again, look forward to upcoming videos where we'll actually talk about some of the mission types which we used, again, to focus more on different types of terrain and kind of prep people for getting used to the notion of playing missions in anticipation for the new Corvus Belly Infinity book, which will is the Paradiso campaign book. Hope you guys had a good one and I will talk to you soon. Bye.